Hey guys, so welcome to the second in the Ethereum little uh, series that I'm going to be doing. Um, in the first video, what we did was we literally just installed the, the Geth client, right? the, the Go Ethereum client, which enables you to, to, to mine, to run your own uh, test networks, to send transactions and really kind of get, get our hands on all the, all the stuff that, that Ethereum promises and, and really figure out how it works. So that was a very quick video just to literally get the uh, get the the client installed. And in this in this video, I'm going to take take the next logical step, which is to actually set up a a local sort of private Ethereum network on your local machine, right? And um, so I'm I'm going to keep these videos probably a bit shorter than my than my Bitcoin um, videos, just because I, I want them to be kind of standalone and address a particular problem. Um, but hopefully they'll be a bit more frequent as well. So, um, so the so what we have is um, so we've got our Geth client installed, and I'll link to the previous video if you haven't installed that yet. Um, so the next step is to to actually um, to actually create um, a, a a blockchain to create a network, um, and, and and so so let's uh, let's get going with that, right? So I'm going to take you through the the process right from scratch, um, and some of this. You know, you don't have to follow. It's just, um, but I'm going to link all the com all the commands um, in the in the in the description below. So um, if you want to follow them exactly, then you may as well follow exactly what I do. And this is just a lot of some of this stuff is just to set up your environment um, so that the commands are the same. So I'm just going to do um, I'm just going to do cd. So I'm already there actually. Cd into my home directory, right? Then I'm going to um, I'm going to make um, I'm going to make an Ethereum directory. Which already exists, which is fine, right? But if you're doing it for the first time, it won't exist. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an environment variable called Ethereum Home, okay? Ethereum Home, which uh, I'm going to append to my Bash profile. Bash profile effectively sets the environment variables every time I load up a new command window. So if I shut this window down and then I reopen terminal, then that um, that environment variable Ethereum Home will always be there. You do need to fill, obviously, you need to change the path here. You, you won't have this username um, on your Mac, um, fairly obviously, right? So I've already done this. I've already added, um, executed this. Um, you're just going to append it to your bash profile. That, um, so what that means is that if I type uh, env, then I already have my Ethereum home right there, right? So, uh, so, so that's, that's there for me um, every time I start a new session, which is important. So let's clear that down. So the next thing we want to do, so if you've, if you've actually seen any of my um, Bitcoin blockchain videos, um, then you'll understand the concept of the Genesis block and, and then how the Genesis block uh, is the first in the, in the blockchain and all subsequent blocks um, s sort of you know, pile on top of it um, across all the nodes. It's, it's a distributed ledger. If you're not familiar with blockchain, by the way, um, I mean, you can you can go to anywhere else to learn about it, but I've done a fairly detailed series um, on on blockchain with a Bitcoin context. So I'll link back to those, and uh, you can start from there. But so I'm going to assume that you kind of understand what a Genesis block is, um, and and what the blockchain is uh, in, in in its generic form, right? So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a create a Genesis block file, right? So we're going to create a new file using vi. Okay, <clears throat> Ethereum home genesis or JSON. <clears throat> it's a blank file. We're going to press I to go into insert mode. That's I. And then we're going to paste, and I'll paste this content in the comments below. All right. I'm going to copy. I'm going to just kind of copy some text from my notes in here. All right. Um, this is the, so this is a JSON format, um, sort of uh, key value attribute pairs, if you like. Um, so we, here we, we define certain key parameters about this particular blockchain. I'm not going to go all, over all these now because, as I said, actually, um, this is going to be a sort of step-by-step -step tutorial guide and I'm only going to cover ex exactly what you need to progress, right? But what is useful to point out is that the parent hash is uh, zero because it's the first block in the chain um, and uh, the, the difficulty target, that, so that sets... Um, that, that, that determines how easy it is to, to mine new, box, new blocks that, whose hash meets the difficulty target. Again, uh, I've covered that in a lot of detail in my Bitcoin series, so um, 
Um, I'm not going to go over that again uh, right now. Um, so let's just so I've hit escape, and then I hit the uh, colon W Q, and then enter to exit out of there. So we've now got our Genesis JSON um, Genesis block right in in a file. Okay. So now now what we need to do is we just need to uh, we're going to initiate um, a new a new blockchain um, based on this JSON, um, this Genesis.json, right? So we're going to do a. Uh, so I'm going to create. I'm just to type in the comment offline. I'm going to paste the command in here, and I'll, again, I'll paste all these commands in the comments. So what we're doing here is we're saying so we're running geth. Now remember, in the first video, we just run geth by itself. Right, just completely alone, and it, I can do I can do it here, um, just to uh, just to remind you. If you run geth by itself with no parameters, this what what's actually happening is it's going out to the um, it's going out to the, the the internet, and it's going to try and start downloading the entire um, the the entire uh, Ethereum blockchain, right? Which takes a long time. So I'm not going to do that now. Um, I'm just going to come out of there. So it's starting that. I'm going to come out of there. Right, so I'm going to go back to what I wanted to do previously. Which is this. Right, so we're, we're starting Geth, but instead of using the production, let's say the, the, the real world Ethereum network um, blockchain that's out there and, uh, and, and, and the main one that everyone uses, we're, we're creating a, a, a private one. And we're saying, right, Inside our Ethereum home, we're going to create a, a, a folder called YouTube One, right? The, the command will create it for us. And inside that folder is where this particular node is going to store its copy of the, of, the, of the blockchain. And the blockchain in this instance is a private blockchain that's only going to be on my computer. And at the moment, it's only got one node, right? Um, later on in the video, I'm going to show you how to, how to add another node, which will have its own separate folder, just because, as we know, blockchain is a distributed uh, ledger where every every node has its own copy, but for now we're running one node and it's going to store its blockchain inside this new folder, and it's going to build that blockchain on top of the the Genesis block that we just created. So all the all the stuff about the difficulty target um, and all that kind of stuff is going to be determined by this JSON here, right? So if I just run this, right? So nothing nothing too uh, nothing too spectacular comes out of that, right? Um, so then, so that's just, and if we have a look now, so CD YouTube one, so it's created the folder for us, and inside there, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing much going on yet, right? There's, uh, so nothing, nothing interesting has happened. What, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually start get. So th this was just running get, um, sorry, get, the previous command, right, was get, init, I'm highlighting it there, init, just initialize get, it's not going to run, it's not going to run anything. What we're going to do now is we're going to run the console, okay, so it's another get command um, called get console. So I'm going to just, again, paste this, paste this one in. So just to explain what's going on here, let's change the network ID to, um, or the, the data directory to what we've just created, so YouTube 1, right? So we're saying, again, run this get command pointing to the directory we just created because that's the blockchain we're going to use. And we're going to run the console, right? So we, what we're going to do is we're going to start the interactive JavaScript console that's really powerful for, um, for sending transactions and starting the miners and doing all the kind of stuff you want to do. You do it inside this, um, this really um, easy to use JavaScript console. And, that's, and you start that by invoking the console command. And then this bit at the end, is, is basically saying, well, so we're redirecting the, the, the log output to, um, to, to a file, right? So if I just run this, so now we're connected to the console, right? So you can see this chevron here. Um, if you want to exit, you just type exit, right? Let's go back in, straight back in. 
And by the way, so I've got th this is the first of four windows. Later in the video, I'm going to show you. Um, we're going to we're going to run. We're going to show you how to attach multiple um, consoles to to the same node. And then and then over here, we're going to add a new node, right? So that's the goal for the video. So stay tuned. Um, right. So within the console, there are a few there are a few um, APIs that are um, that you'll use a lot, right? So one is admin. So if we type admin dot and then if you tab, you can see all the things that you can type. So admin dot tab, you can see we can we're going to we're going to use this later on. Uh, add peer, um, but the, the, one of the most important is node info. So if we write admin dot node info, we can see okay this is the port that the um, that the this node is listening on. By default, the port is three zero three zero three, and we're going to show you later how you need to use a different port if you want to connect multiple nodes on the same. Uh, machine, right? Which stands to reason, otherwise you're going to get a port collision. So, what the E node we're going to use up here a lot as well. So, th this E node d defines this particular node. So, if you want to, and it's always worth just sort of re remembering the, let's say the the last um, the last four digits in hex of, of the E node ID nine D two two. That's going to be that's going to be identifying this particular node on on the network. Um, at the moment, we only have one node, but um, so it's not too, not not too uh, complicated right now. Um, one of, so another common one is the personal API. So you do personal dot, and then you can see you can do all kinds of things here. One thing that we may as well do right now is to create a new account, right? Which is basically creating a new user or a new address on on our node. Um, if we want to do mining, um, if we want to do any mining and any transactions, we need accounts. To 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 um, first of all to to mine, and we need accounts if we want to send transactions or receive. Um, uh, so if we want to send ether or receive ether or any of the other cool stuff we do later on. So let's create a new account, right? So personal dot new account, and then we put a passphrase. And you have to remember this passphrase, otherwise you can never ever unlock that account, right? There's no there's no password reminder um, here. So I'm just going to put a simple passphrase, repeat it again. And then, so now, so this is this is the account that I just created, right? This is the, if you like, the the, the address of the account. So if I do, um, so what else was there inside personal? Um, get list accounts, list wallets, lock account, new account. Um, if I do personal dot list accounts, then I can see there's only one account, right? So. Um, so that, and then, and then the other key one is the eth, so or eth, right? So eth dot, um, for example, um, so anything to do with the any operations to do with the actual blockchain um, that, that that this node is part of. So for example, um, eth dot block um, number, um, which is obviously it's zero at the moment. The reason the block number is zero is because the only block in the chain is the genesis block. So we haven't started any mining yet. Um, all we've done is initiate the blockchain based on the Genesis block, and um, so right now the block height is zero. What we're going to do later on in the video is we're going to start mining, and then you can see that block number start to go up, which is quite quite interesting. And that that's really how you kind of build build uh, comfort around these tools is by getting your hands dirty, um, you know, with one small step at a time, and and saying, oh, okay, you know, start the miner, see the block um, block number rising. So so admin. F and personal are the, are the APIs within this JavaScript console that you're going to use a lot. Remember, I can just come out of there anytime, and then I can just jump back in anytime, right? But most of what you most of what we're going to be doing is inside this uh, this console, right? Which you can see with the with the arrow, the chevron here, right? So the, the next thing I want to show you is how to how to connect another terminal window to the same node. Right to the same node in the um, in the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out of here. Um, in fact, let, let me start it again. And I'm going to I'm going to reduce the size of this window so we can see the other window. Right. Um, let me make this one bigger as well. Okay. So so what we're going to do here is. So we so we're running our we're running our geth um, console in the top directory. If I go to cd uh, 
Ethereum Home. Remember that because of the Bash profile thing we did, this Ethereum Home uh, we can use anywhere. And let's go to uh, CD YouTube 1 and see what's inside there. So we can see in here we have a, uh, an IPC um, handle here. Which So what this is, this artifact enables other windows to essentially grab a handle and, and, get, and get involved in, in this session up here. Right? And, and to do that, it's very, very simple. Right? So, so, you just, so we're in another, another console window here. And if I just do... Um, so all I need to do to attach to this console is to do get attach and then specify IPC and then the path to that IPC, which we saw in the window. Right? We saw it, it, it was, it was this one. So if I just do this, now... Now I am attached to the same node. Right? We've only got one node running, and we've got two windows to the same node, and that could be useful um, just to if you want to sort of run run something, see some, uh, um, you know, do some things in parallel or, or, or whatever. Um, if we just double check, remember there was an admin dot node, pardon me, node info, right? And then we, if we do the same down here, admin dot node info and scroll up you can see so the the e node 3b3 ea68 sorry 36817 is the same right so we're we're actually connected to the same the same node in our blockchain there is only one node at the moment um, but we, but we so just by doing by specifying this um, this ipc and doing a get attach we can attach as many different windows, and the point is that the IPC is this handle that's created when we started Geth in this window, right? So that's that. That's quite cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create um, another node on the on the network, right? So at the moment we've only got one node, but I'm going to go into the right-hand window here. Let's make it a bit bigger. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another node over here. So we're going to I'm going to run geth again. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is run geth again. This time, you can see we're pointing to a different data directory. So we're creating, we're reinitializing another node from scratch, just like we did on the left-hand side. We're going to point to a new data di directory. We're going to run the init command. But the point is, we're pointing to the same genesis block. Right? We, can't, we can't add, because if we're going to add this node to the other network as a peer node on the same blockchain, they have to come from the same genesis definition, the same genesis block. Right? So we run this. So we run this, and then now you should, should, we can see the, if we do CD Ethereum Home, and then CD YouTube 1A, so you can see we have a new folder, which is great, right? And what we need to do is, what is we, we need to, we, not, when we start, this node, right? When we start this node, we need to make sure that we specify a different port, right? So if we go to the left hand side, and remember if we did admin.node info, you can see the port is 30303. So when we start when we start this node, we need to make sure that the um, that the port is different, right? I'm just sorry, I'm work, working on the commands in the, in the background, right? So we need to make sure that the port that we specify is different. Um, so we're going to make it uh, 30304. I'm just going to copy this in. Bear with me. Console.log. So just going through this again. So 
data, di data directory is YouTube1A, the one we just created. The port is 30304, so that it doesn't clash with 30303. Um, no discover is something I've added just because when you're starting, and we should have probably added it at the beginning, it just means that there's no chance of any, any other blockchain networks um, that might have um, might be in the vicinity, if you like. Um, probably it's a bit um, over paranoid here, but that they they will not um, they will they will it's not possible for them to to um, to discover this network and, and, and attach to it, right? So, um, but network ID network ID one two three four, right? So when we when we start a node with a network ID, that enables us to actually attach that node to another node with the same network ID. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is go to the left hand side again and I'm going to restart this one, our first node, right? But I'm going to put, I'm going to put a network ID, network ID of 1, 2, 3, 4 as well, right? So I'm going to start that, the port will be 303003. Uh, so I've restarted that, right? If we just do admin.node info again, we can see again it started with that default port, which is fine. Over here, we're going to start the different different data directory, but we're going to start with a different port, um, same network ID as the one on the left, because we eventually want these guys to join the same network, um, and then and then that's that. So let's run this. So now we're in here. So let's do let's just uh, do a so this is now a separate node, right? A separate node running a separate blockchain. So at admin.node info, we can see the e node number is ec1ddb29, right? Which is totally different to this one, right? So they're different nodes, okay? Now, what we want to do next is we want to make the second node appear, as in we want to make it a a, a, a member of the same blockchain as the um, the, pr the first node. So we want to make these guys peers of each other. So if we do admin dot dot peers, we can see there are no peers on this network at the moment, right? No peers. And the same over here, right? If we do admin on the left, so on the top left, admin dot peers, there are no peers. So what we need to do is we're going to make this one a member of the first one, or a peer of the first one, and make them peers of each other. And the simplest way to do that, or the, well, the, the way you do that is to do, again, admin.node info, and then we copy the e node number, right, all the way up until the comma, right, so we copy that, and then we go into our left-hand window, and we do peer, and in the brackets, we type our, we paste our enode number, right? So now if we do admin dot peers, so if you see, so we've done admin dot peers, and what we have is the ID, the ID of the, the, the second node we added, right? So EC D1 C D D B like blah blah blah. If we look at um, node admin dot node info over here, we see it's the same e node ID, right? And we can, we can check the same. So the peer relationship is reciprocal. So if we do admin dot peers here, then we have exactly the same. So we have three B three E A, which is the. Sorry, I know I'm repeating myself a bit, but you know it's just as always want to make it clear. So that's the e node of this other node. So now that's quite cool, right? So now we have now we have two um I'm gonna make these a bit smaller now because we're uh, we are gonna be doing everything across the two. Right. So bear with me. Right. So that's great. So we've got two we've got two nodes um on the network two nodes on the same blockchain network. So if we do um, ETH dot um, block height, block number here, and we do ETH dot block number 
over here, they're both zero, obviously. That's not surprising anyway, because we haven't started mining on either of these nodes yet, right? The point is though that these are now these are now on the same network. So if we so what we're going to do now is we are going to um, we're going to actually start mining, right? We're going to start mining uh, on one node, and then we're going to see the block height on both nodes start going up, right? So, so basically, um, if I just do to 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 start the mining, we just do miner dot start, right? Miner dot start one in our JavaScript window. Um, one means we're going to we're going to run one mining thread, right? So now. So we started the mining. Now, quite quickly, you'll see that the, the block number, before too long, but now we can see, so having started the miner, we have four blocks, right? Four blocks in the chain. Um, uh, we can stop the miner, and that will, that will stop, sorry, it doesn't take a parameter. We'll stop the miner, that will stop any more blocks being created in the meantime. Um, we can restart, the miner again, and continue the continue the mining process, right? And then we can so we can check the block number. So there's another block. So what's happening in the background is that the the, the miner on this particular node on the left is busy trying to find a a, a, a block hash. With, with right now there's nothing in the blocks in terms of transactions because we but it's just. Um, it, uh, you don't need transactions for, for a block, right? You can, you, it's just a matter of finding a, a hash with a block header um, that satisfies the difficulty target, right? And that goes back to all my Bitcoin videos. So you can see now the, now the blocks are going up, uh, you know, quite quickly. Um, that's again per, just because of the difficulty target that we set in the Genesis block. So over here, in the node over here, um, in the second node, um, we can do um, an eth. And this is where I, this is the the really cool part, right? So you can see over the, on this side, all the mining is happening on this side, right? But the, the the this node, because it's been added as a peer to the other node, they, these are now on the same blockchain. So this is a bit like um, the Bitcoin blockchain as well, where these nodes are talking to each other. A miner is solving a block and then broadcasting that block around the network. In this case around my local PC, but to this other node, um, which is then updating its, um, its database. Let's have a quick look at the, um, at the underlying database, right? So if you go, um, let's make this one a little bit bigger as well. Uh, so, sorry. If we go to, so we're in here, right? So within our data, data directory that we use to start the console, right? If we go to get, and then if we go to uh, chain data, so this is this is where the actual data is getting stored, right? This is where our blockchain is physically being stored on disk. And the same thing on this node, right? If we do, I'll just make this, bring this in. If we do, uh, so cd. Uh, Home CD. Uh, this was U two one A, so it's our second node, right? And we go to get and then chain data. So this, these, and and this are completely separate directories, right? They're separate copies because each node in the blockchain um, always. That's the whole point. It's a distributed ledger. It's the same. Both of these nodes up here have the same block number, give or take, as in it takes obviously a, a, a few milliseconds or whatever for, for, the, um, for, the, uh, for, the, for one node, the mining node in this case, to actually communicate the winning blocks of the other, other, um, the other node. But by and large, the emerging consensus is that each node is identical, right? And we can, but, but the underlying data is stored in a completely different folder, right? So what we're doing on the local PC here is we're actually building up a, a proper local copy, um, sorry, a, a proper local simulation of an actual um, uh, network, right? So um, 
let's let's just have a look at, uh, uh, at one thing. So if we do eth, remember that API, eth API, right? Eth dot, and we can do this, we can query the blockchain, the local copy within this node, right under the hood, eth dot get node get block, sorry, and then we give it a block index. So so there are in our network there are uh, if we go onto the right hand side uh, block number there are 138 blocks. Okay, so let's take the 90th block, and we're just going to verify that that block, the 90th block on both nodes, is exactly the same in terms of the hash, even though it's being stored on different uh, different underlying data folders, different copies of the blockchain for each node. Right. So if we do eth. I'm just trying to build awareness and familiarity with some of the APIs um, in this really rich JavaScript environment. So if we do eth. Get block 90 on this one, and we do eth. Get block 90 on this one, and then we scroll up. We can see the 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 uh, the, the block hash, right? Is one a eight five, sorry one a eight nine five six etc. Which you can which you can clearly see is the same hash here one a eight nine five six eight. Right. So so just just to prove a point really that 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 both nodes are running. They're on the same network, but they they're maintaining their own copy of the blockchain. Right. And at the moment, yes, we've got no transactions, we've got no smart contracts, we've done nothing interesting, but we're building a network, and in, in following videos, we're going to do cool stuff with that network, right? But we're just building the tools we need to get started. Um, okay, so so just to illustrate a couple of gotchas uh, might save some time. Um, if we if we exit the console on both sides, right? Let's just see what happens if we start. The, the left hand node with network ID 1, 2, 3, 4 and the right hand node with network ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So they're both starting up, okay, which is fine. But let's see, let's try and add, add them as a peer, right? So if I do admin.nodeinfo over here, um, then I can see, um, I can see my e node number. Right, so we just copy that, and I'm going to copy it, and into the left screen do admin dot add peer, just as we've been doing. All right, it says true, but if we do admin dot peers, it's empty. Right, so we have not been able to add a peer when we're using a different value for the network ID. So we what we have to do is we have to exit. Right. We have to restart this node with the same network ID as the left-hand node, right? And then let's do admin dot node info again, sorry. And then let's recopy. Uh, hopefully, this just makes it 100% clear how the how the process works to actually make these nodes part of the same network. So we copy the no number over admin dot node info. Sorry, admin dot add peer and we're going to paste that and then we do admin dot peers and now we have our peer set up again which is which is cool and hopefully that that's kind of um, that's kind of intuitive um, so I think um, what I'm, what I want to do now is so let's start the miner again right so let's just stop all the mining on the left hand node um, but let's let's start again. Let's restart it straight away. So miner dot start. So we're going to start mining on the left hand side, right? So the left hand node is now mining blocks again. And if we do, if we start doing eth dot block number, right? This is going up, and it should be going up here as well, as as the nodes communicate the winning blocks to each other. That's going up right at the same at the same time. So what we can also do is do, we can do eth dot get block, right? And then we do eth dot block number. This gets us the, the latest block in the chain, right? And we can do dot minor, right? So we can, we can keep running this and we can see that, so this is getting us the minor, right? Of the, the the last block, the most recent block in the chain, right? And we can do exactly the same 
on the right hand side, right? Because it's the same block, it's the same network. So over time, it's the same blockchain, but different underlying persistence, uh, different underlying copies of the data. And you can see the miner is the same, right? And if you remember, that miner was the account, right? Personal dot. dot list accounts that is this miner right there's only one account in the system that we've created at the moment and that's the account that we created right at the beginning of the video on the left hand node that's the that's the account to which the um, the proceeds of the of mining the block is going and and all the blocks currently are being produced by this one uh, one user this one account right um, and those blocks are being uh, communicated to the to the other side, right? So, and there's only one miner running at the moment, right? So let's uh, and, and what we can also do is say, well, obviously we know that mining carries a, a reward, right? Otherwise, people wouldn't do it. So what we can do is we can do ETH dot get balance, and then we pass in the account. Right? So you can see it's a very rich API and it's very easy to use. So we're calling eth.getBalance and we're calling, and this is our expression that evaluates to the, 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 the account, the address, the account ID of the, the miner of the, the highest block. Right? So we should see this going up all the time. Right? So you know, it's already... So this is a test account, so the, you, know, you, you can mine as much as you want and you can get as much ether as you want because it's just private. Um, but you can see the balance of this particular account going up because he's continuously mining, solving blocks, and, and each block has a reward. Right? So um, that's kind of cool as well. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to make it a bit interesting and we're going to give this guy, um, we're going to give this guy, uh, as in... This one, we're going to give them some competition. So we're going to do over here. We're going to do in the right hand side. We're going to do. We're going to start mining on the other node, right? And that's a common gotcha. So we need to create an account on this other node as well, because at the moment we we don't have an, an account to attribute the 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 the, the reward to, right? So and then we do a passphrase. Repeat the passphrase. So now we have, now we have another account in our system, right? On the on this node, on the right hand side. I'm not sure why I'm pointing. So this one, we can start mining now, right? So miners start one, right? So now we have two miners in the system, one on one node and one on the other node, and they're both competing on the same blockchain. So if we see. Now we can now we can see. Maybe, wonder if I wonder if this second guy is having any luck, right? So if we do, um, so the latest block on the blockchain. Well, lo and behold, so our new account, our new our new mine, miner has already managed to 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 mine the latest block. If we do this one, so this is the old user, right? So actually, they're engaged in a bit of a head to head, right? And 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 statistically, it's looking like. It's pretty even Stevens at the moment. Well, so our new our new one's winning, winning. Our, there's it goes back to our old one. There's a new one, new one, new one. So you can see this is brilliant, right? So, so we've got two miners on two different nodes, and they are both trying to solve uh, for the new blocks. These two nodes are communicating the blocks between each other. Those blocks are getting persisted in the underlying databases down here, right? If I just do LS minus, you can see the. Um, you can see the contents of these uh, separate blockchain copies evolving, right? And this is this is really exciting. So so now now we can see so none of these blocks, as I say, have any transactions or, or anything in them or any smart contracts or anything like that. But what, what I think we've what we've achieved is a um, is a scenario where we have um, we have the basics in place to, to really start getting our hands dirty. All right. 
So the, the one last thing I want to show you. So by the way, stop now. Um, this this next bit's optional. I just, I just want to show you how to use the um, if you want to attach other JavaScript or other windows to a situation where you've got multiple nodes running. Um, we looked at the IPC thing at the beginning, and I want to show you how to to um, to to do that when when there are multiple nodes running. Right. So if you if, if you're interested, read on. If you're not, then I'll just finish up here and say, you know, thanks, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope this was quite clear, and I hope that you know you're excited by this as, as I am, um, because I'm really looking forward to actually, you know, getting into some smart contracts and some transactions and, fig you know, and, and getting into stuck into how Ethereum works. Um, so yeah, um, hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please watch my Bitcoin blockchain sessions if you're not familiar with block hashes. Um, the mining process in general, um, Genesis blocks and all that. Um, and um, you know, thanks for watching. Right? Um, for those of you who want to stay around, I will show you um, what I meant about the IPC thing. So it's quite straightforward. Um, I'm going to exit my both my nodes, right, left and right. I'm going to go back to the left hand node, and I'm going to I'm going to restart this time. Okay. I'm going to restart the node, but I'm just going to add one more parameter over here. Right after the network ID, I'm going to add an IPC IPC path. Right, and paste the. So I'm going to. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to I change the network ID to YouTube one, which is the data directory that we're in anyway. What I'm doing is so by default. The IPC path by default is 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 just set by default if you don't specify it, but you can um, you can specify where exactly you want that IPC handle to uh, to be to be uh, saved, right? So I'm going to specify I want the IPC file to be inside my YouTube one data directory because that's the di that's the directory that belongs to my left hand node, right? The key point is when you've got multiple nodes running, and it's kind of logical. You need to you need to make sure there's a specific, unique IPC for each node running, right? So I'm going to run this one over here. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same. On the on the other side, right? I'm going to I'm going to restart my other node, so that was one A, and then if you remember, I had to specify the port as well. Port was. Um, Three zero three zero four, right? So now I've specified. I've got my two nodes running, and I've specified an IPC path. So I've started both both nodes again now. Um, and the point is, they've both got their own IPC file, right? So this is our right-hand node. If I do ls here, we have a get IPC in um, in up for our second node. And then if we go to our node on the left, right, we have our, uh, so in YouTube 1, we have, we have our IPC here, right? So if we want to attach, so we've got our two nodes running, two consoles, JavaScript consoles already running, but if we want to attach other consoles, right, to, to, the, same, to the same nodes, we just have to do, um, over here, we can, so let's start on the left-hand side, very straightforward. You just do get attach, and then we just do get attach IPC Ethereum home, and this was YouTube one IPC, and we're in, right? So, so that's how you do it, and you just do the same on the other side. But the, but you the the point is you just you have to choose to attach with, to which node you want. You just have to make sure you you you're choosing the the correct IPC file for for the particular node, right? So. And the, IP, and the IPC file is specified when the node actually starts, right? Using this IPC path, right? So that's that's really that. Just a little bit of an aside, just to because also one other thing that I want to make sure that I, I did in all this was to make sure that um, that I don't because if you see a lot of sample commands for get, they have all these different flags, and you don't know okay, well which one which one do I need? Which one do I not need? Um, and how do they work together? I want to try and make sure that I don't introduce any new flags until they're needed, until they're explainable. So that's so I just want to also illustrate what this IPC path, um, what this IP, IPC path means. Okay. So yeah, thanks if you uh, made it this far. Uh, that's almost an hour. But uh, in the next video, we're going to start talking about 
um, balances, accounts, transactions, um, and all that kind of stuff. So and we're, we're going to use all the stuff that we've done here. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.